Hey folks, Eric Woldridge here of the Added Guru channel. Today we're going to do a little design work. We uh, had a request for a certain type of device. And so we're going to walk you through the creation of it. Something pretty simple. But uh, moral of the story is this, or the story goes, I should say, is we've got some kind of containers that are uh, sort of elliptical in shape. And they need to be stabilized in a housing that's going to be kind of exposed to a lot of liquids. And so they need to be stabilized, but they also need to be very open and porous in terms of the structures. So what we're going to do is design a sort of stand that basically is kind of like a cup holder, but is going to be a lattice structure so all kinds of fluids can flow through it. Now the cross-sectional size of these uh, bottles is elliptical, and it's about, I think, 75 millimeters this way, and about 85 millimeters this way. So what we're gonna design is this, and these are sort of the bottle shapes. Overall depth doesn't have to be, they don't have to sit down into them too deeply. I think probably a 60 unit depth would probably be sufficient for stabilization. So we'll say 60 there will be just fine. Maybe even 40 or 50 could probably work just fine that way too. So, here we go. Let's go with the process of figuring out how to design this through. I'm gonna take a quick, quick screen cap. Or actually I won't, I'll just do that in post. Uh, so let's just go ahead and start off. I'm gonna use a loft to kind of create the two shapes or the, the top and the bottom of it. So I'm gonna start off by just creating a uh, view here and I'm gonna go ahead and draw the ellipses that represent the bottles. And I'll maybe center that one. We said 85 this way. It's thinking about it. There we go. Get it set up this way. I'll set my lips this way. We'll say 75 and 85. And of course, as mentioned, we have two of them. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate this one real quickly. We've got a modify here. Let's go move, copy, and we'll say Create copy, and we will just drag it over here. Do want to kind of keep it aligned though, although it doesn't make a huge difference if they're not perfectly aligned. It's not the big deal. So, we've got the two ellipses. Now, of course, these represent the actual bottles themselves. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them. Ah, uh, whoops, I accidentally got it out of my. my Sketch them. Go back in. I'm gonna switch them to construction lines by clicking on them, making sure my window over here is expanded out, and there we go. Because I don't really need them for the first part of this process. I just need to be able to uh, size for them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a uh, spline that just sort of wraps itself, maybe tucks in just a little bit here because I don't need to waste a lot of material. Now I'll just come around and do this. Now you could do this, do this do this also with just an offset. Doesn't really make a difference. I like the spline because I like to play around with the shapes and kind of tighten things up where I need to. Plus also realize that I want a little bit of space because even though these are the bottle sizes, I will need to go a, bit, a little bit larger than them so that I can actually create enough space to put the bottles in and out on a periodic basis. So I need to have a little extra wall thickness here. Not too tore up about how big that is because we're gonna do lattice structure generation to it to size them down. But anyway, there we go. So this represents my loft top section. What I need to do now is create a plane that I can use to loft the bottom section. So to do that, I'm going to construct an offset plane. I click on this one and I just pull it down and we'll just say that we will set it to be, uh, I don't know, we can probably do 65 here, minus 65, and the plane is down there. Now what I'm gonna do is create another sketch, and I'm gonna use it to help me create my overall shape. So I'll just make it just a wee bit longer, or wider, than my top, because we want a little bit of a foot effect. You know, you want a little bit of stabilization. So I'll just maybe do a little bit of this. I could use my offset tool for sure and make it very uniform in nature if I wanted to, but I'm okay with it having a little bit of uh, non-symmetrical components to it. All right. 
And so I have my two features that I really need. I have my loft up top and I have my loft down below. And so I would choose my create and go to loft. And I'll click this plane and then this plane. And let's, so it looks like it doesn't really like it that way. So I may have to work with it just a little bit. There we go. That is selected a different variation. Let me show you. I'll delete that and do it again. So do my loft. And this time I'm going to go from clearly the bottom plane to the top plane. And it lofts up and we get the shape that we're after. So it's kind of like a, a dog bow almost. And that's fine. So uh, the next step, of course, is to create the pockets for our actual bottles to sit down into. And I'll do that by just doing another sketch back here on the top surface, since my sketches are still showing up. By the way, if your excuse me, sketches are not showing up, you can come over to your sketches body here and turn them back on. So I can actually turn the other two off and just leave my top one on. And I'll just draw a circle and I'll put it about right here. I'll just make it, maybe I should do ellipse, that would make more sense. I'll do ellipse. And I'll put it about right here. And I'll come to about this point. Maybe make it a little bit bigger than that. I didn't like that. Ah, yes, got to turn my sketch back on the top plane because that's the one I'm sketching on, sorry. Got rid of that one by mistake. All right, so anyway, there's my first one. Get rid of that, don't want that. Okay, so I have my lips here. Let me switch back over. And I'm gonna kind of click, maybe drag it just a little bit, get it closer to the edge. And you can see I'm a little slightly off center, so I'm gonna kind of orient it a little bit better. And maybe drag it back. I just want it big enough for our, our bottle to fit down in there nice and neat. And if I see that I'm having a little, as you can see right here, I'm having a little bit too close of a feature. So I'm probably going to need to go back into and create a little bit more space in between these two, which I can do that really quick and easy. I'm going to go ahead and finish off my lips though on this one. And I will say it's going to be, you know, about this wide and there. And as you can see, we've got some issues with the overlap. So I'm going to need to go back and modify my design. If you want to, you can pause the video and kind of follow me along to get to this point. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Okay, so I'm actually going to go back and make the top a little bit bigger so I have more space to work with. So I'm going to go back into my first sketch and I'm just going to pull this apart more, maybe shift this over a little bit more, a little bit more this way, this way. Now again, all I'm doing is creating more space for us to work with. Right in there. Make a sketch and then I can come back into the latest sketch, right click there and say edit sketch, and I can pull this over some more. Again, remember that these holes, or what I'm drawing right now, represent what I'm going to cut out of this product. Uh, maybe even slide this one over just a little bit. It's locked onto that hole, which is fine. So I need a little bit thicker wall there, uh, maybe a little bit wider. If I can get it over just a hair more, will be good. Finish that sketch, and I'll go back and change the first design again. And a little bit more there, more there, there. You can apply dimensions to this and kind of get more of a uniform control of the process, but we're trying to be a little bit on the organic side. So we'll go back in here and edit, maybe slide over just a hair more. It's good, and right there is fine. All right, and I can see I need a little bit, I want a little bit more space right there. So I'll come back one more time into the original design and Pull that curve a little bit more up. That should take care of us. Okay, so I've got everything that I, I sort of need to make this thing. I need to go ahead and subtract out these holes. I'm gonna turn my first sketch off so I don't get any interference, and the second one too. And I'm going to actually extrude down. So I click on this and tell it to go down, and we'll just go down. We say 65, so let's just go down to 55, maybe minus 55, and we will do our cuts. And yeah, it definitely looks like a dog bow. Now, this 
obviously could be a dog bow if you want it to be, but our objective is to create a housing more so than anything else. So what I want, and I want to maximize how much material is turned into a lattice structure or and minimize just wasted zones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shell tool from the bottom side and I'm going to say that I want roughly uh, 10 uh, millimeters of space, maybe even, maybe even 15. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Looks like it's, yeah, looks like it's going to be too much. About 14. Yeah, I can't do that either. 13. Almost there. Maybe I should go back to 10. Yeah. So there's the construction. And so the rest of it is all going to be lattice. And we can even size it down a little more than that. If we want to go 8, we can get a little bit more out of it. Where it would actually build up to that last point. But, you know, I think we're probably better off doing none. Okay, so we have our feature. And so we've got our creation, and now the next objective is to turn this structure into a lattice structure. So we're using in topology to accomplish that. Let's go ahead and pause the video though, and catch up to here. Again, you don't have to be dead on. You can just kind of uh, get close to what I've done. And if you don't like the base there a little bit more, you can always stretch that out, do a little bit more. I can easily go back into my second sketch here and maybe do a little bit more pulling this way, a little bit more width since I did bring the hole over that way. Maybe a little bit like that. We can always get a little bit more creation to it. Yeah. All right, pause the video and catch up to that point. All right. Now you'll notice that I haven't worried about doing a lot of chamfering or fillets or anything because it's going to be turned into a lattice structure anyway, so that's kind of irrelevant to what we're after. We're just going to see if we can't make this thing to a lattice with just the base essence of what we're after. So to move to the next step, of course, you know, we've got our bodies that we have here and it's a single body. I'm going to need to save this as an STL or actually export it as an STL so I can take it on into Element. Let me go ahead and just right click and save as STL and we'll accomplish it right now. You can of course save yours as whatever you want to call it. I'm going to name my bottle base lattice maybe an underscore one for reference you can call yours whatever you like but you do want to name it with something that you can find later on. Okay so the next step is to open up uh, in topology element uh, or any other kind of lattice software and bring in your design. All right, I have Element opened up and I uh, have my STL right here. So I'm just gonna drag my STL into the space and let it know that it's in millimeters. All right, so there we've got our design. Now at this stage of the game, one of the things that I like to do is I don't like the way it's oriented, so I can use my utility to transform it and rotate it. We'll try 90 this way and see what happens. And that's not the way I wanna go. So go back to zero. Maybe we'll do a 90 this way. There we go. And the kind of, even though it's below the plane, that doesn't really matter. So I'll hit OK. All I've done is just made it easier for me to zoom around uh, in Element. Now, the next couple of steps, this is totally up to you in terms of what lattice structure you want to use. I'm not too picky about it. And I'll just try a couple different ones just to show you the concept because it is pretty a simple design. We're just wanting to use the lattice structure to eliminate a lot of uh, time and energy in optimizing this. So I have a lattice, uh, we can try, actually we'll try Veranoi. So I'll hit my cast stick there, click it, and Veranoi, target cell diameter, maybe I'll small size that down to eight, and say generate, see how it does. It's gonna take its time. And there we go, not bad. Um, Structure-wise, looks looks pretty good. I may actually decide to make it just a little bit smaller in the cell size, so that way we can get a little less overhangish in certain cases. So I may size it down to six and say generate. All right, there we go. And the reason I'm wanting a little bit denser uh, lattice structures is because you know it could take a beating over time. It's not supposed to, from the description that we've received, but it could get kicked around and that kind of thing. So. Uh, that's set 
and I kind of like what I'm seeing. I could size it down just a little bit more, but let's just let's just see how it does. So hit OK, and there's my lattice structure. Pretty dense, pretty complex. Uh, let's go for a thicken, and I'll set this thing to 2.4, say thicken, and yeah, pretty dense structure that you see there. I may realize, may say, you know what, that's a little bit too dense. Um, and I can see a lot of weird overhangs down in this area that may cause me trouble, but it may not too. So I can fix some of that. Since I went a fairly good thickness, I can actually change my cell size and my lattice structure. And so I can just get rid of that lattice and hit delete and then lattice this one again. And maybe I'll, I'll go up to 12. Again though, you can lattice this in whatever format you'd like. Uh, this is just an example. That one looks, eh, looks okay. Let's try a thicken on this. And let's go 2.4 thicken. And not too bad. I think I want it a little bit more complex than that though. So maybe I'll just go in the happy medium and try uh, this. I'll go back to delete that lattice. The reason I'm deleting these lattices off here is just simply because if you don't, it just starts stacking a lot of different lattice structures and sometimes that can be more annoying than it is useful. So maybe I'll just go to try 10. That looks pretty good. Thicken. And I'll thicken again 2.4. I think that'll work. It creates a good boundary for our target bottles. It's got a floor for them to sit on. The floor itself is not super, super, oh, there's not a huge number of overhangs. There are some for sure, but they may be okay. And uh, it should be fairly straightforward to print. Could find out that it wants to do support material in certain cases, um, like spot right there that I don't like. But you know, we can deal with it uh, a couple different ways. So that's one way I can uh, address the creation. And at this point in time, it's, it's ready to go. So hit OK. All I need to do now is actually mesh it. So we interchange, select it there, and say generate. All right, and okay. And there we go. Now I have an object that is, uh, will meet the requirements of the task. And then all we have to do is get to a printer and print. Again, there may be some cases underneath where I might need to go in and add some beams here and there to support a couple points especially on these perimeters. That one in, in particular I'm looking at thinking that's not the best choice in the world. And I could go through and fix some of that. Uh, looks like the underside is, is pretty clean and neat. Usually you do see that around the perimeters of the Veronoi is uh, those kind of odd, flat, long ones starting off and then usually it's okay after that point in time. I could also fix this by going back and maybe making the cells about nine in size, which I'd rather do that than go through and make just a bunch of beams. Be, but this we'll see what happens. But anyway, at this point in time, after it's meshed over here, all I have to do is right click on it and say export, and then save it as my uh, bottle base mesh. And I'll call it one, and I now have my object file, and it is ready to be loaded into my 3D printing system for slicing and production. So that's pretty much the process. Uh, I'll do another one of these two, but you can try out a couple of different variations that you like. And uh, it's a simple little project to use for creating a customized, organically designed, super lightweighted, yet functional product based on a challenge. So uh, have fun with it and uh, happy printing. Make sure to check out some of our other videos that we have out there for uh, additive manufacturing and design software. And uh, let us know if we can be of any help. Check out some of our website material and social media as well. We'll see you.